Christmas University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Two more alumni teams take to the buzzers tonight with our student cohort having closed their books and put their feet up for the winter. In this short tournament, a win is necessary but not sufficient to progress, with only the four highest scoring winners qualifying for the semi finals. Now, Durham University was established by Act of Parliament in the 1830s, although its oldest buildings date back to William the Conqueror. Tonight it's represented by one of its own professors emerita, a geophysicist whose research focuses on mantle dynamics and the origins of volcanoes. She's been awarded the Royal Astronomical Society's Price Medal and the Leopold von Buch Badge, the highest honour of the German Geological Society. Their second player is Regius Professor of Anatomy at the University of Aberdeen, and the current president of the Anatomical Society. His research focuses on spinal muscular atrophy, a young onset form of motor neurone disease, and how better to treat it. Their captain is an anthropologist, author and Emmy-winning documentary maker whose work has taken him from the animal markets of Indonesia to the front lines of the war in Afghanistan via the cruise ship Galaxy where he helped launch the career of Jane MacDonald. Most recently, he's been embedded on the warship Queen Elizabeth, recording its first operational deployment. Their final player is a physicist whose work focuses on the period when the first stars began to radiate light. She published her first book on the subject in 2020. She's also been awarded the Royal Society's Athena Prize for her work towards ending sexual misconduct in higher education. Let's meet this year's Durham team. I'm Gillian Folger and I graduated in 1986 with a PhD in geophysics. I am Simon Parson. I graduated in 1987 with a BSc in zoology. And this is their captain. Hello, my name's Chris Terrell. I studied geography and anthropology and graduated in 1975. And hi, I'm Emma Chapman, and I graduated in theoretical physics in 2010. Now, the University of York is part of the so-called plate glass generation established in the 1960s. Like Durham, it's collegiate to an extent. Also like Durham, it chooses to enter this competition as a single body. Its first player tonight is an award-winning journalist who's currently investigations correspondent at The Guardian. He's written three books to date on the financial transformation of English football and a fourth on corruption in FIFA. He's also spent 25 years investigating and reporting on the Hillsborough disaster. Their second player began her career as a molecular biologist before becoming a chemistry teacher. Her experience in schools led her to an interest in the theory and practice of science education, and she's now a professor and head of the School of Education at the University of Leeds. Their captain is a broadcaster and presenter whose self-titled YouTube channel has over 5 million subscribers and over a billion video views. On it, he produces educational videos on linguistics, engineering and technology, with recent titles including I Rode a Giant Mechanical Elephant, You Can Too. Completing the team is a sociologist who studies material, culture, consumption and our relationships with everyday objects. As a professor at the University of Manchester, she's currently writing about what she calls dormant things in domestic spaces. Let's hear them introduce themselves in the usual fashion. Hello, I'm David Conn. I did English literature and politics at York and graduated in 1987. Hi, I'm Vanessa Kind. I graduated in 1995 with a PhD in science education. This is their captain. Hello, I'm Tom Scott. I graduated in English language and linguistics and then an MA in educational studies in the early 2000s. Hello, I'm Sophie Woodward. I graduated in 2001 with a master's in qualitative research methods. Now, the rules are the same as ever. Ten points for starters, which have to be answered alone and on the buzzer, 
Bonuses are team efforts worth a maximum of 15 points. Fingers on the buzzers, here's your first starter for 10. What decade saw all of the following? The premiere of Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, Alexander Fleming's discovery of penicillin, the first non-stop solo flight across the Atlantic. York Scott, 1920s. Correct. <laughs> you get three questions on Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean. On the 25th of December, 1643, Captain William Miners sailed past and named Christmas Island approximately 345 kilometres south of which other island the most populous on Earth? Is it really Java? Uh, most populous island. Uh, Java, Indonesia, Australia? Somewhere in Indonesia, we'll just say. Probably Java. We're going to say Java? That's what we think. Java. Java is correct. In 1900, the island was annexed to the government of the Strait Settlements Crown Colony, which had its headquarters in which city? Strait. Is that going to be Australia or New Zealand? I would say New Zealand. I would say, you'd say New Zealand? I would say that. So Auckland? I was going to say, Auckland. Yeah. No, it's Singapore. Yeah. In 1958, the island became an external territory of which country? Australia. Australia. Australia, Australia is correct. <laughs> OK, ten points for this. Bubble, heap, cube, shell... Young Scott. Sort. Sort is correct, yes. <laughs> Right, your bonuses are on comets. The appearance of a great comet in 44 BC was taken by many in Rome as a sign of the deification of which political figure? 44 BC. 44 BC. Political figure. Oh, it must be. Is it, would it be Herod? Uh, nominate. Herod? No, it's Julius Caesar. Yeah. In 1994, Shoemaker Levy 9 collided with which body in the solar system, an event observed by the Galileo spacecraft? Jupiter. Correct. Visible from the Earth most recently in 1986, which comet is depicted on the Bayer tapestry during its 1066 appearance? Halley. Correct. Well done. <laughs> Begin to take a picture around. For your picture starter, you'll see a standard symbol used in electrical circuit diagrams. For 10 points, name the component it represents. York Scott. Diode? Specifically? Uh, no. Durham Chapman. Light emitting diode? Correct. Oh. <laughs> so you saw there the standard electrical symbol for a light emitting diode or LED, which you might see on a circuit diagram for a set of Christmas lights. For your bonuses, you're going to see three more symbols you might see on the same circuit diagram. Five points for each you can identify. Firstly... On a set of Christmas lights, so it's having... That's not a bulb. Yeah. And there's lights, and there's a battery, and there's a current. And I'm also that might be the... It's not a relay either. I'll have to say it's a lamp. OK. A lamp. No, it's a transformer. Not being around you when you put the lights up. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly... There's an idea. Maybe? No. Is it some sort of a switch? A switch? No, it's a transistor. And finally... Battery. Battery or cell is correct. Well <laughs> Ten points for this. The work known in translation as Land of the mountains, land by the river, is the national anthem of which European country, whose highest mountain is the Gross Glockner, and which... Durham Parson. Uh, Germany. No, you lose five points, and which lies predominantly in the basin of the River Danube. You, can't come you may not confer. Your kind. Austria. Austria is correct, yes. <laughs> For your bonuses, you get three questions on an African country. Settled in 1822 by freed American slaves, which country is Africa's oldest republic? It became independent in 1847. Liberia? Liberia? Yes. Liberia. Yeah. Okay. Liberia. Liberia is correct. 
In 1824, the city that was to become the capital of Liberia was named in honour of which US president who had financially supported the settlement project? Mm. Oh. Okay, it's the capital of Liberia. That's 1824. 1824. 24. Yeah. Adamstown, isn't it? I don't know. I'm happy to try it. No other. Yeah, Adamstown? That's no, James Monroe, as in Monroeville. In 2005, which Liberian politician and economist became the first woman to be elected head of state of an African country? She was awarded the 2011 Nobel Peace Prize. I've got no idea, I'm afraid. Get something like Karangi, or Karangi, something, Karangi. I can't remember. Something like... Nominate. Is it, is it Karangi? It's, no, it's not. It's Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Johnson. Okay, no. Ten points for this. What material links the titles of all of the following? A 1951 avant-garde jazz album by Stan Kenton, a 1943 novel by Herman Hesse, a 1944 Tennessee Williams play, and a single released in the UK... York Woodward. Ten. No, you lose five points. Released in the UK in 1979 by Blondie. You may not confirm. Uh, my God. Durham Parson. Glass. Glass is correct. Well done. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on plays by Moliere. Born 400 years ago this year. In each case, give the title of the play from a summary of its plot. You can give your answers either in French or in English. Firstly, a five-act comedy of 1662 that examines the limited education received by women in French society of the time. It sees an insecure man's attempt to marry his naive ward. Do you know this at all? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Mm. Oh. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. no, don't know. That's L'Ecole des Femmes, the school for wives. Secondly, a comedy detailing the efforts of the middle class Monsieur Jourdain to elevate himself to the standards of the nobility. <laughs> Not any Molly mm -hmm. so. Okay. Okay. Let's get, let's get, uh, That's Le Bourgeois Gentilhomme. Finally, a play with the title that can be interpreted as A Person Who Dislikes Humankind. Misanthrope. Yeah. 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 Le Misanthrope is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. The name of which branch of philosophy appears in Latin following the word Principia in the title of a 1903 work by G. E. Moore? In English, after the word practical in the title of a 1979 work by Peter Singer, and after Eudamian and Nicomachean in the usual titles of two works by Aristotle. Darren Terrell. Existentialism. No. Anyone want to bust Woodward. Is it ethics? Ethics is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on the Indian singer Lutar Mangeshkar who died in February 2022. In Indian cinema, which English word precedes the word singer to indicate artists such as Mangeshkar, who recorded songs for films to which actors then lip sync? Such singers are usually used widely in South Asian film and often have similar status to the actors themselves. Thoughts? Back up, ghost. Background. Background. Like, um, what's the French word for chanteur? It's specifically a word before singer, yeah. though. Um, so, before singer. Okay, I'd go to ghost. 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 Yeah. No, it's playback singer. Oh, okay, mm. good try. Yeah. In January 1963, Mangeshka gave a notable live performance of Kavi Pradeep's song, O People of My Country, commemorating soldiers who died in the previous year's conflict between India and which country? Sorry? Just trying to think. Okay, we're getting the option. 63. So we've got India and it could be, maybe, well, they've, they've split. There was a Pakistan. Pakistan. That's China. Okay. In which 2004 film by Michelle Gondry does Kate Winslet's Clementine play songs by Mangeshka in her apartment while she entertains Joel, played by Jim Carrey? Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Right. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Correct. Well done. Right, we're going to take a music round now. For your music starter, you'll hear a piece of jazz which is based on another well-known piece of Christmas music. 
The 10 points simply name the original piece. Yonk Scott. The Nutcracker Suite. Specifically? Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. It is the Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. <laughs> OK, that was Duke Ellington's version of the Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy from Tchaikovsky's Bally the Nutcracker. Your three bonus questions are other pieces of jazz that are based on or quote well-known Christmas tunes. Firstly, please name the original piece of music adapted here. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. That is correct. Secondly, name the original piece adapted here. Sit there and Good King Wenceslas. Good King Wenceslas. Good King Wenceslas is correct. Finally, will you name the Canadian virtuoso jazz pianist in this? Any Canadian virtuoso. Yeah. With Oscar. I don't know any Canadian jazz yeah. pianist, so... Dave Brubeck? Uh, it's Oscar Peterson. Uh, sorry. That's OK. It's worth a try. Another starter question. In 1913, the Scottish doctor Margaret Todd coined what word in conversation with chemist Frederick Soddy to refer to forms of an element that have the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons? Durham Chapman. Isotope. Isotope is correct. You get three questions on political power. Quote, I put for a general inclination of all mankind a perpetual and restless desire of power after power that seeth only in death. These are the words of which English philosopher in a work of 1651? 1651. Anybody? Any philosophers? Yeah. I guess. You say Bentham? Yeah, I think I think it's too early. Yeah, have a go anyway. Okay. Bentham? No, it's too early for him. It's Thomas Hobbes in Leviathan. In a work of 1941, which English author compared his country to a family with the wrong members in control, where there was, quote, a deep conspiracy of silence about the source of the family income? No, I don't know. That's George Orwell. God, <laughs> and finally, supreme executive power derives from a mandate from the masses, not from some farcical aquatic ceremony, referring to the Lady of the Lake legend. These words appear in which 1975 film? 75. 75 films? I was a bit young. No, I don't know. That was Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> Ten points for this. The opera's Gawain and the Minotaur and the orchestral work The Triumph of Time and the saxophone concerto Panic are among works by which Accrington-born composer who died in April 2022? Uh, York Kent. Harrison Birtwistle. Harrison Birtwistle is correct. <laughs> right. Three bonuses on the founder of modern genetics, Gregor Mendel, who was born in 1822. Mendel established key laws of inheritance by conducting experiments with distinct varieties of which leguminous plant, known binomially as Pisum sativum? I think it's corn. I think, I think it's, it's, corn. it's peas and... Peas, he used peas and corn. So which one um, do you want to go with? Um, OK. I'm going to go with corn. Corn. No, it's peas. Oh, oh no, sorry. Looking. What genetic concept <laughs> introduced by Mendel is used to indicate greater influence of one variant or allele of a gene over another? Dominance. Dominance. Sorry, dominance. Dominant. sorry dominance. Yeah. Dominance is correct. Mendel observed that traits are transmitted independently of each other. This was called into question by the discovery that genes were located on which thread-like structures within cell nuclei. DNA. Is that DNA or is that vinosomes? D no, it's DNA. It's DNA. DNA. Chromosomes is what I was looking for, but uh, we'll accept DNA. <laughs> Another sort of question. 
The five rivers after which the Punjab is named are tributaries of which larger river that rises in western Tibet and meets the Arabian Sea to the southeast of Karachi? York Scott. Ganges? No. Darren Parson. Is it the Indus? It is the Indus, yes. <laughs> so your bonuses are on stadium architecture. Built for the 2022 FIFA World Cup, the Al Janoub Stadium in Al Wakhra, Qatar, was designed by which Anglo Iraqi architect? It's the lady. We should go quick. It's a female architect in Devon. We need to be quick to so get more points if we don't know it. Mm -hmm. Just pass. I can't just pass. Yeah, pass. It was Zaha Hadid. <laughs> the architecture firm of Herzog and de Meuron, best known for their work on Tate Modern, designed which major stadium in Munich? No, just, just pass them. Just pass. Just pass. That's the Allianz Arena. And finally, Herzog and de Meuron also designed the Beijing National Stadium, sometimes known as the Bird's Nest. In collaboration with which Chinese artist? Is it, is it Chinese artist? Mm -hmm. no. 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 Pass. That was Ai Weiwei. Right, we're going to take a picture around now. For your picture starter, you'll see a snow scene by a well-known artist. For ten points, please give me the name of the artist. York Kent. Monk. Monk is correct. Snow scene. Your picture bonuses are three further snow scenes. In each case, I want you to name the artist. Firstly... Any ideas? Ah, uh, OK. Oh, you don't have any ideas on there. Take a point on it. Um, OK. I'm going to take it a guess. Looks, no it looks modern. Yeah, you take a guess. Take a guess. Okay. Magritte. No, it's Van Gogh. Oh. Oh. Secondly... Oh, What's that's, uh, that's um, Hokusai. Uh, nominate. Hokusai. Hokusai is correct. And finally... Oh, Bruegel. Bruegel. It's Bruegel. OK, Bruegel. Yeah. Sorry. Bruegel. Two to yeah. one. Bruegel. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Although he eventually backed down, Winston Churchill announced his intention to watch the D-Day landings from which warship launched on St Patrick's Day in 1938 and now a branch of the Imperial War Museum. York Kent. The SS Great Britain. No. Darren Parson. The Discovery. No, it's HMS Belfast. Ten points for this. What vital sign used to evaluate health is measured at systole and diastole? York Scott. Blood pressure. Blood pressure is correct. Well done. Your bonuses this time are on English words of Persian origin. In each case, identify the word from the description. Firstly, a term for a canine scavenger, the golden species of which can be found from Southeast Europe to Southern Asia. This word appears in the title of a 1971 thriller by Frederick Forsyth. Jackal. 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 Jackal, Jackal. Jackal is correct. Shrubs or vines native to tropical and some temperate areas that are popular as ornamentals and bear fragrant white, pink or yellow flowers that are used to make perfume and tea. It's not, it's not rose, is it? I was jasmine. thinking jasmine. I think jasmine. jasmine. Okay, you think? let's try jasmine then. What were you going for? I was going to go for gardenia, but jasmine sounds better. Jasmine. Jasmine is correct. Historically, a group of people, especially traders or pilgrims, travelling together across a desert, it can now mean a covered wagon or a vehicle equipped for living. Caravan. Yep. Yes. Caravan. Caravan is correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> the Scottish sailor Alexander Selkirk, who lived on an uninhabited island off the coast of Chile for over four years, was the inspiration for the protagonist of which 1719 novel by Daniel... Yonkind. Robinson Crusoe. Correct. These bonuses are on a historical event. The 1917 revolution in which the Bolsheviks seized power in Petrograd is known by what name after the month of the Julian calendar in which it took place? September. 
I was thinking the September or November, but I don't know which. Uh, you were. I was going to say September, but it won't let you go for that. September. No, it's October. Mm. Oh. <laughs> During the October Revolution, the Red Guard stormed which building that housed the Russian Provisional Government and has been the official residence of the Tsar? Is that the Winter Palace? Yeah, could be. Any other guesses? No. The Winter Palace. The Winter Palace is correct. Which Russian composer subtitled his 1927 Symphony No. 2 to October, commissioned for the 10th anniversary of the October Revolution? It's not Shostakovich. Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. I think it's either Tchaikovsky or Shostakovich. Shostakovich much later. Okay. Yeah. Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. Oh, Tchaikovsky. Oh, no. Ten points for this. Guide to citizens' assemblies, this is not a drill and challenge everything, are among the publications of which environmental movement, formally launched by a declaration outside the Houses of Parliament in 2018? Durham Parson. Is it Greenpeace? No. Yonk Scott. Extinction Rebellion. Extinction Rebellion is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on chemistry. Which indicator, blue in bases and red in acidic solutions, is derived from several species of lichens? Definitely. Litmus. Litmus is correct. What is the common name of the plant in the Capitata group of Brassica oleracea, which, thanks to the presence of a class of chemicals called Anthocyanins can be used to produce an indicator solution. Red cabbage. Red cabbage, right? it, yeah. Yeah. Red cabbage. Correct. What is the common English name of the spice derived from a plant of the ginger family that turns yellow in acidic conditions but a reddish brown in basic solutions? Mm, Turmeric? I think it's yellow. Turmeric. I don't think it yeah, turns. Ginger family sounds right. Turmeric. 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 Turmeric is correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Involving the oxidation of impurities in crude iron, the Bessemer process was the first inexpensive process used in the production of which metal alloy? Yonkin. Steel. Steel is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on animals whose names differ by a single letter, such as mouse and moose. Identify each pair from the definition. Firstly, a wild member of the pig family and a mammal of the family Ursidae. Boar and bear. Boar and bear. Yes, you're right, of course, but you were just after the gone. At which Durham had 45 against the University of York alumni team who had 200. Durham, 45 is... Uh, Useless. Or terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> At least you recognise it. It was our gift to them for Christmas. <laughs> well, it was jolly nice of you, York. Congratulations to you. 200 is the best score we've had so far, I think. Oh, great. It's good. Thank you. Well so we Thank should you. look forward to seeing you in the semi-finals, probably. In the meantime, it's goodbye from Durham University. Goodbye. goodbye. It's goodbye from the alumni from York. Goodbye. Bye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.